155th Contact Sunday, December 6, 1981, 10.45 p.m. Billy says it almost seems scary to me how quickly you come here, my friend. Quetzal says the concerns are also of utmost importance and urgency, so I must devote myself to them immediately. Time is just too short before the year is over because by this time, the solutions must have already been found. However, your mental remarks about the conversation with Ingrid were very much more enjoyable for me than I had expected, and that's another reason why I hurried all the more. Billy says I can see that, for you're in really good shape. Quetzal says do you have something else to add to your explanations? Billy says no, but maybe I've forgotten something. But if that is so, then it will certainly come back to my mind again in the course of the conversation. Quetzal says that will be so. But what do you think about your conversation with Ingrid? Do the explanations correspond to the correctness? Billy says I think so. Quetzal says then no difficulties should appear, which could cause any failures. Billy says as you mean. Quetzal says I already expected your conversation with Ingrid yesterday, though. Billy says ability before laughter, my friend, because yesterday, I first had to get rid of all the snow around the house and on the road. After that, I then had a long discussion with Sisai, because of Roland, etc., after which was then the core group meeting, which also lasted until after midnight. Quetzal says then you had no time, which is understandable. Billy says quite right, otherwise, I would have already brought up your concerns yesterday. On the other hand, it was also such that Ingrid and Ferdinand first arrived here in the evening, also Guido, who had to be towed away by Ferdinand on the mountain, on the icy road from Stjurten to Sitzenberg, because Guido's car no longer made headway on the ice. Quetzal says an air vehicle would exclude such breakdowns. Billy says you really make me laugh, for that is hellishly difficult with us. All sorts of tests are required for this and also special permits. And even if Guido would have all this, a helicopter would still cost so much that the costs are unacceptable, quite apart from the operation of such a bird. And what do you think? How would Guido probably look in such a vehicle, and what all might he do with it? If he would just fly somewhere in the clouds, in order to stroke the wings of a pretty angel there, then that would certainly be harmless. Note from the translator the last statement of Maya above is most certainly meant to be sarcastic as Maya does not teach that angels live in the clouds. Quetzal says I understand, the difficulties with such a vehicle are too great. Billy says definitely. But now to our cause. So do you now think that you can address the concerns and put them in order, if the High Council approves of it? I think that this will provide all kinds of work which will also last for years, or am I wrong there? Quetzal says if the High Council finds our proposals to be good, then we will do our best in every respect to correct the false actions that arose, so that the determinations of evolution can be fulfilled, completely or at least to a large degree, by all those who were subject to the false actions. But as I see the matters now, after all that you've explained to me, it might be such that the High Council will give its approval, after which I can then give you the answers to your questions for sure. Billy says and you don't think that it's necessary, for you and for everyone, that for all those involved, you yourselves clarify the things and obtain the information? Quetzal says you know that we aren't allowed to do that because it would be an intrusion into the personality. For this reason, we must rely on the data given to you by Ingrid. If these, however, are not of correctness, then it could cause the greatest harm to those involved, to Ingrid as well as to Ferdinand, Elizabeth and all her children. We cannot verify the data because we aren't entitled to do that. Billy says you already said that earlier, but now, it would be very important for me to know how the actual destiny conditions are with regard to the partnership of Ferdinand and Ingrid and what is also very important is there a possibility that Elizabeth can become a true friend of Ferdinand and Ingrid? 
Quetzal says after everything that you mentally transmitted to me at 6.45 p.m. comma no possibility and also no urgency arise for this. The fact that this step is also actually taken doesn't correspond to the fulfillment of the determination and obligation. We have also considered such a resolution of matters first, so your question in this regard isn't new to me. This is also the reason for the urgency that under all circumstances, you had to discuss these issues with Ingrid no later than today, namely because from Ferdinand's side, steps have already been taken that would still multiply all false actions in their effect. Billy says oh, now I understand. You speak of an already almost friendship, which should not come about. Ingrid told me that this friendship should become closed, which you designate as wrong. Quetzal says that is of correctness. For this reason, the clarification came in such a hurry. This is also the reason why I'm already here with you after your transmission. And as soon as we've finished our conversation, I will be on the quickest way to the High Council, in order to receive its advice and approval, after which I will then be back no later than tomorrow evening in order to give you the final clarification. Billy says you are, indeed, in quite a hurry, my friend. Apparently, the cause burns within you. Quetzal says that is also of correctness, for it is urgently necessary, if, in this case, the issues should still be rectified, that it begins prior to the 2nd of January, 1982. Certain circumstances show that a resolution at a later time would no longer bring the desired success. Therefore, these things are so urgent. Billy says and, can all issues still actually be straightened out? Quetzal says according to our calculations, there is a 78.6% chance of success, if our instructions are followed. The missing percent, however, can still be resolved, if also those things are followed, referring to the major problem that still isn't accepted by most group members up to now and that will result in a renewed problem in 1982 with the new offspring. Billy says you are damn imprudent, my friend. Quetzal says at some time, the explanations must be given and bear fruit, and it is indeed time that these concerns are finally considered and understood by all, like also the matters of necessary hygiene, for which you cannot find the words to make it understandable and acceptable in German, for in these respects, many group members still adhere to false and unreal ideas. Billy says that is still clear, and maybe someone is here to help me with this. Besides, you also promised that you'd call in someone from your new people for this. Quetzal says that is of correctness. Billy says then everything is regulated. But now, I would gladly like to know what's up with the regulations regarding Ingrid and Ferdinand, if you already know about these things at all, which I must assume, however, after you recently explained the concerns about K to me. Quetzal says your assumption is of correctness. These concerns have already been clarified by us for a long time, whereby this duty is obliged to us in each case when a new group member enters into your community. Thus, I am able to tell you the exact data that you want, but only for those involved, which is why you shouldn't make them available to others, if it isn't expressly demanded by those mentioned. But for the time being, it would still be of correctness if these concerns would only be made available to those involved. Billy says that's no problem, for as usual, we can conceal such things while copying the report pages. Quetzal says that should be done, for even these issues are still incomprehensible to various group members because they are still always adhering to wrong moral concepts. Billy says which is also the case. Unfortunately, in regards to hygiene, which is why I also have difficulties in the writing of the directives. All too quickly do words go down the wrong throat with the human beings of the earth. But we will solve the case soon, that's for sure. Quetzal says it also becomes the time. But now, hear what I have to explain to you in their lives. The determination of Ferdinand and Ingrid was set and ordered by them quite differently than how they shaped their present lives. 
Neither one of them has determined himself for the other, even if they have come together in a marital bond and witnessed descendants, which also doesn't correspond to their destinies. Even their previously contracted commitments and their impacts didn't correspond to their destinies, but rather to the wild joining together with different ex-partners, etc., by what means they very heavily disturbed and harmed their destinies. Both of them have even done this to such an extent that they destroyed their actual destinies, through which these cannot be rebuilt in their present lives. The necessary psyche vibrations have already been destroyed in the two, before these were ever fully developed. Thus, both of them did not enter at all into the joy and sense of harmony of the destiny vibrations, whereby it also remained denied to them to develop a true love. When the two met each other, they met two completely foreign and not suitable for each other human beings, who, due to their confusion and ignorance entered into a wrong partnership, which is devoid of any true love. The existing feelings do not correspond to true love but only to a form of imaginary love, which can be readily broken and dissolved. Thus, it concerns a sham love, which cannot be developed into a true love alliance in this life. If we now try to change this unfortunate relationship, however, then the cooperation of the two must be in full, otherwise, only partial successes or no successes at all can be achieved. If full cooperation is guaranteed, however, then there is a possibility that Ferdinand and Ingrid can develop a love alliance for each other, which is fully adequate according to a human judgment. According to our concepts, However, we cannot call this fully adequate because it will only be 66.3%, which means that during the remainder of their lifetimes, there will always be a 33.7% uncertainty, which can cause unwanted consequences or changes. Relatively seen, that is very little, as other earthly married couples have far higher risk factors. Billy says that is, actually, a small percentage. Quetzal says that is of correctness, which is why it also gives us no worries. What makes us more worried is the fact that both Ingrid and Ferdinand are thoroughly dishonest, as we've found out by our latest analysis. On the whole, they are dishonest in all relations and only focused on their own advantages, whereby their greatest desire in accordance with that is to have group sexual relations among and with the group members so they are also striving diligently to move one and another group member away from the center and draw them to themselves. This is the main reason why we must fear that all our efforts will fail and bring no success. We only see one possibility for this still to be able to be changed, namely if Ingrid bears offspring that wouldn't be born by a marital sense but rather by a generative power that doesn't correspond to her husband but rather to a man who strolls elsewhere on the earth but not a group member. Billy says I know the machinations and intentions of the two rather well, and I also know that it will be damn difficult to explain everything to both of them. Quetzal says yes, because Ingrid as well as Ferdinand are distinctively insidious, and Ingrid is still of the thought that we don't see through her game, when she falsely feigns understanding. Billy says I don't understand why the two, in spite of everything, are with us, even though I must say paradoxically that every human being deserves a chance. Quetzal says there is, in fact, no more than one trial and one chance for the two. Billy says what's the use, however, when Ingrid and Ferdinand only feign advanced understanding, whereby it's safe to assume that everything that you accept as genuine is also lying and hypocrisy. Quetzal says the use or non-use will prove itself, and then it will also be proven as to whether or not we've been mistaken in our acceptances. But before we talk further about these things, I have to draw your attention to your contact report pages that were recently handed over to me, in which a serious point of incorrectness appears. During our conversation on the 10th of October, so about two months ago, you recorded my remarks and records in writing and in shorthand, referring to the destroyer, the planet Venus, the Earth and various other things. In the pages that you handed over to me, I've now found out that you made an omission error namely in the drawing up of the list. 
Here, you see, between the year 1726.5 BC and the year 1151 BC, you left out and didn't record the year of the apocalyptic disasters. Here, you still have to use this in order to complete the list. Billy says show me, please yes, actually, I must have overlooked this. Wait, I'll immediately make the necessary notes and you can witness them immediately 1511 BC to 753 BC. A bright wandering planet 1.4 times the size of the Earth's moon breaks into the Sol system. Of unknown origin, it comes in from space and breaks into the orbit of Venus, in order to disturb its course. It then passes dangerously close to the Earth and disturbs its orbit and balance, whereby the Earth, in the course of about 158 years, is disturbed by the Wanderer that returns several times, and the Earth is even reversed in its rotation, accompanied by apocalyptic disasters, by which the cardinal directions and the annual revolution of the Earth around the Sun are changed in such a way that the orbital period drops up to 284 days. Worldwide fires, earthquakes, floods, and volcanic eruptions are the consequences and leave their marks on the earth. Continental parts and islands sink into the seas, while new portions of land are pushed upward. So this time, I also have these data. I guess I was rather inattentive when I copied your records and overlooked this information. Quetzal says you were also very burdened at that time which is why such a mistake can arise. Billy says possibly, but tell me how the people behaved back then, when all this happened. I see here that your records still mention that this wandering planet remained in the Sol system for a total of 758 years, before it disappeared again. Quetzal says that is of correctness, this wanderer moved in a staggering course around the Sun for 758 years, and it repeatedly brought the Earth, Venus, and Mars into distress and hardship, and especially the inhabited Earth was endangered very much and was covered with catastrophes. The human beings of the Earth still worsened the catastrophes by causing whole empires to fall through wars, destruction, murder, and plundering when certain countries hadn't been very badly affected by the catastrophes. And this entire catastrophe and insanity process lasted for a long 758 years, namely up to the year 753 BC. But all that wasn't enough, for after the year 1151 BC, the destroyer, with its next return, also brought new terrors and fears for the human beings of the earth, but which you already mentioned in your records. For eleven days, the Earth drifted in the tail of the destroyer, causing smaller disasters in this passageway. Billy says another question about this here, you've only given me the primary data, therefore there still should have been other incidents of lesser importance. Quetzal says that is of correctness, but on the one hand, they really aren't very important and on the other hand, they are part of a much earlier history such as the destruction of the planet Milan, over which you are oriented and have also received information about it. The Earth was also slightly affected at that time, when this inhabited planet exploded, having been destroyed by human hands. Billy says when was that anyway? Quetzal says at the time of the building of the pyramids, so about 73,30 years ago. But now, we should turn again to other things because a question from you is still open, which you already gave us a long time ago, but which we couldn't answer to your satisfaction because we first took to fathom and clarify everything. By this, I'm referring to the question that you asked in the name of Helmetries, with regard to the book The Chronicle of Akaka and the one who appears in it, Tatum Kanara chief of the white Indian peoples known as the Alamongulala, written by an art correspondent named Carl Brueger. The entire history of the alleged chief Tatum Kanara is based on lies and deception, just like the one named Tatum Kanara, who, in truth, was born a German. His real name is Hansa Richard Yontahawk, who has learned the trade of a bricklayer and who was born on the 5th of October. 1941 as a son of Jehan Hawk and Meta Hawk and who was born in Grub and forced him Bayern. Married on February 15, 1962, 
he disappeared a few years later, after which his marriage was ended by divorce by the district court, Nuremberg Fürth on 10 January, 1966. After his willful abandonment of his wife, he worked for a short time on a ship named Dorte Oldendorf, from which he soon departed, however, and disappeared into South America, where he entered into strange connections with the Brazilian Secret Service SNI, then conspired with the military there and then settled down in the jungle under a fanciful pack of lies, in order to appear from then on as Chief Tatum Canara and to make talk of himself. Thanks to the dreamers Eric Van Daniken and Peter Kresser, as well as the correspondent Dieter Kronzerka, his pack of lies has been carried out and distributed into the world, which entailed that various people fell into the murderous clutches of Hans I. Hawk, whom he then treacherously murdered in the depths of the jungle, in order to get at their money and valuables. Unfortunately, through the fault of the money greedy dreamers and believers in the matter of Tatum Kanara, it also won't be avoided in the future that other people will fall victim to his murderous sense and greed, such as the correspondent Carl Brugger, whom Hawke would allow to be shot by an assassin in Rio de Janeiro in the year 1984. Also a Swiss named Herbert Warner from Zofingen will become one of his victims, as well as a German living in Sweden and who bears the name Christine Heuser, but also an Englishman by the name of John Ride. However, these won't be the only murder victims in the life of Hans I. Hawk because by the time of the murder of Karl Brueger in Rio, Hawk will already be a 12-time murderer. Billy says man, and of course, once again, nothing can be done about this. Quetzal says that is of correctness. Everything is already predetermined in such a way that it can no longer be stopped by any means. Billy says also responsible for this is, indeed, the damned delusional faith of human beings, who are still fueled by the likes of Eric Van Deniken and Peter Krisser and through whom they still earn huge sums of money thereby. Quetzal says that is also of correctness because by such fantasy story writers, many people become led astray and even led to such degenerated human beings, such as this Hans I Hawk. Not only are the misled and fantasy believers confused and partially or heavily disturbed in their consciousnesses by fantasy writers such as Eric Van Deniken and Peter Kresser, but they also sometimes run the risk of losing their lives, like in this case. However, this disturbs the fantasy writers very little or not at all because for them, it is always just important that they obtain prestige and riches through their fantasy stories and writings which truly have no significant value, however. Billy says unfortunately, the earth human beings grasp at sensations, and in their ignorance of the truth, they market themselves as dumb and stupid, and indeed take them literally. They don't want to know the real and true truth, which is why they run after such dreamers, as they also do with the sects and religions. Quetzal says your words are of correctness, but they aren't so quick to change anything about all evil. Billy says you telling me. Man, sometimes the earth appears to me as the most as a madhouse. Even the joy of singing goes away in the process. Quetzal says that is understandable, but it would be a great pity if you would destroy this joy of yours. Already often, I have heard you sing, and one can really take pleasure in your singing. In fact, you would be competition for some professional singers. Billy says thanks for the compliment but tell me, may I announce what you've explained and, thus, publish it in the contact reports. Quetzal says no, because before the statements of my words have been fulfilled, you may not give anyone any information about this. Even the things I'll tell you now must remain your secret for the time being. You many only inform extremely trustworthy group members, when I tell you the time for it. Billy says as you wish then I just forget everything, thus, it also disappears from my memory. Quetzal says for some issues, it is also important for us that you don't talk about them, at least not for the time that we need to create clarity. Billy says you speak quite mysteriously. Quetzal says that's just it you cause the problem for us. A mystery surrounds you, which we cannot fathom. Here and there, 
you write teaching materials for our spirit leaders, who all have the valuation of an Ishwish, like also Bata. And they all speak very respectfully of you, and even the High Council only speaks of you in extreme reverence. But what all this is, this remains a mystery to us, and the High Council won't disclose the secret that surrounds you. From Patar, I also know that he is instructed by the High Council to approach you with spirit scientific questions and problems as well as questions about the creation and the like, after which you can then actually give him information and teachings, of which he himself is still ignorant. We questioned the High Council about the solution to this mystery, but we left with the advice that we have to ask you because the right information relating to this lies solely with you. The High Council, so they informed us, would only be entitled to the information if the level of Arahat Athasatha would give permission for this, etc. Thus, I now have the question for you why is the High Council silent, and why are you, in matters of the creation related teaching and spiritual teaching and their laws and commandments, their structure and relationships, etc., so far educated, of such high understanding, so knowledgeable, and so wise that even Pata is prompted and ordered by the High Council to obtain advice and teaching knowledge from you in a private manner? What mystery surrounds you and why don't we know the solution for this? And why does the High Council also remain silent? Billy says sorry, my son, but I would not like to talk about that yet. The mystery should remain a mystery for the time being, and indeed, not only for you but also for the group members of Vigu. In this, I must also insist on the fact that for now, nothing is spoken of this or of the fact that I make teaching material for your spirit leaders, etc. The earliest point in time, in which this subject can be addressed, will be when I finally get around to writing and completing the book OM just like the group members, you will also have to wait at least until then, after which you will then find out a lot from the book OM, even things that are still a mystery to you up to now, even though your knowledge and your wisdom and many other things are of a much wider range than that of the earth human beings. However, the book OM will also only provide you with vague clues when the time comes, thus, in spite of everything, you will still have to strive diligently for the entire solution to the mystery. But now, I would already like to tell you one thing, namely that you will have to revise some of your opinions and views tremendously when you unveil the mystery. You will also be very sorry, particularly about the fact that you are rather condescending at times and think that you have fed wisdom with an especially large spoon. But in truth, you are only a small cog in the entire transmission, even though you're ahead of and far superior to the earth human beings in very many things of technology, ethics, knowledge, logic, and wisdom, as well as innumerable other things. But one day, you will recognize that you are of the same origin, created out of a single idea and force, which made you alive and aware, and which you are facing again even at the present time. Quetzal says your words are puzzling to me and they also seem to be attacking me, my friend, for which you must, indeed, give me an account. Billy says hardly because what you find to be attacking only corresponds to the truth, even though you might not like it. Quetzal says you accept that your words are of correctness? Billy says certainly, my son. The point in time will even come when you will want to apologize to me, once you recognize the truth of my words. Quetzal says then your words must be of profound significance which I currently cannot fathom, however, which is why I also don't want to talk about these things any further. However, there is still something else that you should explain to me we just recently found out by the High Council that all your writings contain a very complicated code that releases certain impulses in those human beings who occupy themselves with reading or listening to the writings, which also applies to us and our peoples, for we use your writings as well. What is the explanation of all this? Billy says I would like to give you information about that at a later time. On the other hand, this is also another mystery that may not be discussed until I've written the book OM then, at the earliest, there may be talk of the code, 
which is also a very important part of the overall mission, as this is also the case with the Codex, which will enter into force as soon as the contents of the book OM are written. First, I must finally write the book, even though my poor health and many other things and tasks only let me tackle and carry out this duty with great difficulty. Quetzal says we were also informed about this Codex by the High Council, and thus, we stand in constant instruction. We must strive very much in this respect and investigate many things, but the High Council assists us. It is an enormous task that we have to do on account of you. Billy says I know. You have a tremendous amount to do in this regard. But can we now talk about something else? Semiaza once told me that I may not take a photo of her because she moves every now and then on the earth among the human beings and may not be recognized. But that can't be the whole reason because this explanation seems somewhat flimsy to me. Quetzal says to explain something incompletely to you is almost impossible yes, there is another reason, and it is based on the fact that a lot of damage and harm can be caused by photos if human beings with evil thoughts concentrate negatively upon others and upon photographically depicted human beings. Negatively oriented earth human beings could affect us so heavily and viciously and inflict a lot of harm and evil upon us if they could steal photographic images of us. This is the second and most important reason why we may not let ourselves be photographically depicted. With ask it and error, we could allow it only because both of them live in the Dal universe and cannot be affected from the earth in their lives in the aforementioned way because no forces of any kind can penetrate through the barriers of the universe. Graphical representations, however, are harmless. Billy says thanks for the information, which just confirms to me what I had already made sense of myself. But now, still another question, which refers to our group, or rather one member of our group Elsie behaves more and more strangely and is also often against you and against Patar. What you say about her, she flatly says is a lie, and she often also denies things that I can prove to her on the basis of witnesses or from my own experience. What actually is the matter with her? Quetzal says she is very bossy and thinks she is rightfully entitled to long past things and events, which had arisen nearly 2000 years ago. Thus even today, she stubbornly believes to have a right to her former husbands, as you yourself know, because you revealed to her the former relationships and also her former lives. Billy says it would have been better if I had omitted that. Quetzal says that is of correctness. If human beings know the past of their former lives then they don't cope with this. It is better not to reveal anything about it. Nevertheless, tell Elsie what I had to explain about her. But also, know that she already harbors thoughts of betrayal in herself and wants to leave the group, which will happen in 1989. Her further stay in the group until then will only be an act. Her betrayal is already deeply formed within her, and she cannot be prevented from doing it anymore. Explain all of this to her freely and openly. Billy says I will, but not today. I think that she's already dealt with some of your remarks sufficiently for a few hours, which is why I would like to ask you only to transmit to me portions of the conversation for the time being. You can transmit the rest to me tomorrow, when you have time to do so. Quetzal says it will be getting late before I'm back again. Don't expect me before midnight. But you can receive the transmissions of the conversation in spite of my absence. I will store everything, after which you can then retrieve and keep everything via my computer. Billy says very well, but today, that should be enough. I still have to remove the snow, which will still take a few hours. Then, I will talk with Ingrid again but that might not be until early morning. Quetzal says then I won't keep you any longer and will also perform my duty again. See you tomorrow night, my friend. Until we meet again. Billy says bye. Addendum the following is an attached letter that was written by Elsie Meza. E. Meza, 4th of September, 1989. To Figu at the board of directors 8495 Hintersch Midriyoti. 
subject my withdrawal from Figu. Unfortunately, it is no longer possible for me to fulfill the wishes and duties that Figu demands. Therefore, I have decided to submit my withdrawal. For those who went the way of evolution with me in honest love, I would like to thank them cordially for their constant support and wish them success, happiness, and fulfillment for their future life. As far as my own responsibilities and duties in this world are concerned, I will do my best to fulfill them in accordance with the creation in my personal life. Salome, Elsie. The End